Hi there folks, this is going to be a recap of Photoshop note sheet number one. This is our first note sheet, basically the basics that you need to be aware of before we get farther into the class. And if you've not been filling out your note sheet, that's why you're here. Um, so I want to go over a few of the items that you need to be aware of. First off, the arrangement of panels. These little things are called panels. That specific arrangement is what we call a workspace. And there's different workspaces with different names. If, like me, you opened and messed up this workspace, you can reset the workspace by going down here to Reset, and then whichever one you're on, it will reset it. So Window and Workspace will allow you to reset that workspace. You can also switch over here. This is the Workspace Switcher, and you can also reset from over here. Generally speaking, we're going to be using the Essentials workspace in this class. All right, I have one object open right now. I have this picture here. To open additional ones, I can go to File and Open, and then I can choose my other items. So um, to choose more than one, you hold down Control while you click on them, and then hit Open, and they will all open, and they open in tabs. That's how it automatically works in Photoshop. Um, in order to bring a file over, you have to move it. To quickly switch to the Move tool, you can press the V key on your keyboard. Notice in parentheses there it shows you that that's the V key or this button. So if I wanted to bring this cat over, I'm going to pull down on the tab to undock it, grab my Move tool, click it and don't let go. You'll get a plus sign over here and then let go. And then I can put this back up here to redock it. So there it is. Transform controls are the little controls that allow you to resize and rotate. So to get the transform controls, while you're clicked on the layer you want to transform, which in this case is this one, I'll call it Little Kitty, which by the way you just double click the words to call them a name, press Control and T. Control and T brings up the transform handles. When you transform, don't just grab a hold of this or you're going to smash your little guy. And even pulling from the corner it will let you mess it up. If you mess it up, don't try to fix it. Hit No to not commit the change, or press the Escape key. Control T, and when you hold down from the corner with the button Shift, it will resize it appropriately. We call that maintaining the aspect ratio. So if you want to resize without smashing, hold Shift and drag from a corner. To rotate it, you're going to point to the outside edge and just click your mouse around here. Notice it it's going to rotate based on this little point here. So it's as if there's a push pin on a bulletin board and the push pin's right in the middle of the picture. If I move this down here and I rotate, it's going to rotate based on where that pin is. It's not a big deal. Usually it's in the middle, but if you accidentally pick it up and move it, that's how you can move it back. So I'll go position this one up here. To commit the transformation or to be done with it or sit it down, there are three ways. You can either press the check mark or you can press the Enter key on your keyboard, or just point to the object that you're going to sit down and double click it. And those are the three different ways to accept transformations. All right, next we're going to look at the Navigator panel. Now any panel that you want that's not over here and you can't find it is going to be found under the Window menu. This is all of the panels. And then in addition to those panels, we have the Options bar, that's that bar at the top of the screen, and the Tools, which are over here. So in this case, we're going to open up the Navigator. Um, you can actually, once you open it, it sort of sits here like this little steering wheel. This is your Navigator. It allows you to zoom in and out so you can see in more detail where you're at in the, uh, in, in the picture. You can actually move this red box around to move yourself to a different part of the picture. So this allows you to zoom in and out. It doesn't actually resize it. It just zooms it in and out. And there's the percentage of zoom. So if you want to see like what actual size this is, if you push on these until you find the one that gets you to 100, this is the actual size of this picture, meaning we can only see this part on our screen when we're working. So the navigator is used to zoom in and out and also to move around the image. Again, if you cannot find your navigator and this button is not there, you go to Window and Navigator and tick it and it should be there. All right, so dealing with multiple pictures, if we are trying to put pictures together, we're going to have to examine the little tab at the top to ensure that they will play nicely together. And most of the time we want our images to be in the red, green, blue color space, RGB. So notice that this particular one, which we used for a bell ringer in this unit, 
does not say RGB, it says index. And that's because it's a GIF image, G-I-F, and those tend to have only 256 colors and they're in index color mode, whereas a JPEG has 16 million colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this color mode because right now if I try to move this over, it's gonna say no, it won't let me do it. So to change the color mode, you're gonna to go to image and then mode and then RGB color instead of indexed color. It's gonna change this in the parentheses. And now if you grab your move tool and pull across, it should pull in nicely. All right, and then again, to transform, control T, hold shift pull from the corner, and then position it, and then check mark, enter, or double click to sit it down. All right, again, this bar at the top of the screen is called the options bar, and it changes based on what tool you're clicked on. So if I'm clicked on this lasso tool, I get different options. If I'm clicked on my move tool, I get specific options. If you click on your magnifying glass, you get specific options as well like to zoom in or zoom out, you can switch which one it does. There's also a hand tool. The hand tool does just like on the navigator. If we zoom in on the navigator and we move this around, notice this is a hand. That's the hand tool in the navigator. If I'm on the hand tool here, I can use the hand tool to scoot around. However, I generally don't do that because if you hold down the space bar key at any time, it switches to the hand tool on the fly and then you don't have to go push anything. You just let go of space bar to stop using the hand tool. All right, once you've got a Photoshop document started, it's important to save it in Photoshop format. When you go to File and Save As, in the drop-down menu, it says Save As Type. There's a bunch of types in here. And though my picture started as a JPEG image, I don't want to save it as a JPEG because a JPEG does not allow you to save layers. So all of these layers would be glued together, and we don't want that. So you're always going to make sure that you're saving it as a Photoshop type. And these icons look different, too, once you do them. And then I would give it a name. Notice it says layers, and it should, so that we are saving it in layered format. And you hit OK, and then go on. Now, had I saved that wrong, and I have one in here that I called Animal Collage Bad, if I open it, now notice that these are all glued together. And if I were to take my mouse, I can't move them around. And even if I just ignore it and say, yeah, do this, it's going to move the whole thing. Okay. So never save as a JPEG. Uh, we will sometimes export as a JPEG, but we will never save out as a JPEG. And that's only if we were going to use it for like, um, if we we're going to print it at Walmart or use it in a Google slide, then we would export that out. But don't ever use the save as dialog box to do that. All right. We have a bunch of images open. If I wanted to be able to see them all at the same time, then what we can do is use the window menu and go to arrange and then you can choose any of these options. I'm just going to tile them all vertically so they're all side by side by side. I already have this one and this one in here so now I need to move in the other two. So all I have to do is click on the tab to select that picture, take a look at the background, make sure it's there and then take your move tool, drag it over and drop. Same thing here. Now for whatever reason a lot of students somehow accidentally probably when they press I don't know, control T, they mess up or something. If you accidentally end up with a text layer, an empty text layer like this. So notice I clicked on this one and there's a T layer here. If I try to take my move tool and move, it's not going to do it. It's actually almost like it's trying to draw a rectangle. So anyway, that just means that there's a mistake over here. And in this case, there's this random text layer. I'm just going to drag it to the trash can to get rid of it. Now that I'm on the background, I should be able to drag it over. Okay, now once you've done that and you want to put your pictures back into their tabs, you would go back up to Window and Arrange and consolidate them all to the tabs. Now they're all back in tabs and I've still got my main one. So I always want to make sure, again, this is saved in that Photoshop format. Once you've saved it the first time, you should see it up there. And if it says it is, all I have to do is press Control and the letter S to save. Notice the asterisk goes around showing you that it has been saved. All right, next one, an image in Photoshop sits on what would be an invisible canvas. So essentially, your picture is floating in front of a checkerboard or a canvas that's way back here. Now, we can't see it because this is a background layer. But if I were to unlock this, and if you rename this layer, you would end up um, unlocking it. 
then you could see if I picked it up and scooted it now that it's unlocked, it really is sitting on this canvas. So the canvas can be changed if you wanted to change your canvas size or enlarge the canvas. You would go to image and canvas size. And that's going to allow me to add space around this image in that empty space. Now, had, had this been a background layer still and it was locked, it would let me choose a color to put around the edge here. In this case, it's not, so it's not going to. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just add some additional space. So 26 inches, I'm just going to add 2 inches to each of these. So that'll be 28, and this will be 17. And when I hit OK, it's going to put some area around the outside edge. And then, of course, I would have to deal with if I wanted to try to put color in there. But that's for a different lesson at this point. Um, or I could just add a layer style to my gray cat layer and then put um, a stroke around it. All right. Next up, cropping. If we wanted to crop a picture, it is the fifth button down. Uh, you can just click and drag around the area that you want to crop like this. Or right when you initially choose the crop tool, it puts little edges on the document like so. So you can grab a hold of those edges, or you can literally just click in the middle before you pull those in and then choose what part you want. Cropping always crops in a rectangular shape or square. And then again, same thing. You can use that transformation to accept button and then, of course, pull it over just like before. And that's cropping. To add text, we use the type tool. The type tool certainly looks like a letter T, as you would imagine it would. Um, if I click on this T, I can just click anywhere and it will give me a cursor. Now, right now, I'm clicked on a lower layer. So if I click right now, I'm going to change my color real fast. But if I click right now, it may go behind one of my images. So let me click here. And I'm just going to type kitty. And notice it goes behind my image. Now, once I've typed, I can double click this to select it, and then I can use this button to make my font bigger. I can use this to change my font to a different font or whatever. But once you've made the decision, you would hit your check mark and then use your move tool to position it. Now, the reason it's behind this is because Kitty is way down here. Just drag it up in the layer stack. And if I wasn't under the under a time constraint on recording here, I would rename all of these layers. All right, now once you have text and you click on the type tool again, you can make changes without highlighting the words as long as you don't click in the box. So while I'm just on there, I can choose this, I can do all this without actually highlighting anything, which is kind of the easier way to do it. And then there's this button here for text warp. When you click on that, you can warp that text in different styles. So like you can arc it and you can decide how much or which direction if you want to go the other way. You can also distort it so that either the top or bottom or the left or right are different from one another. And there's all kinds of different ones in here that you can mess with. And you just hit OK and it applies it. And the text makes it have a T with a little um, arc underneath it just like this so that you can tell that that's what that layer has. And you can always go back up and change it so if you don't like it you can take it off by switching it to none. All right, I'm um, going to stop this at this part, and then we will pick up. But at this point, I have addressed questions number 1 through 12 on your Photoshop note sheet number 1.